We're here today talking with Major General Mark Inch, Provost Marshal General of the Army, about the sixth annual Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month. Uh, Army leadership has designated August as Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month. Can you explain the intent of that initiative? Certainly. We use this month to increase awareness to the different programs that we have in the Army to create that very formidable defense that as a, an entire community we can make for those who wish to do us harm. Anti-terrorism is a primarily defensive function against an evolving threat. What has changed thus far in the threat that we face? I think the threat that we face today is probably as significant as it ever has been in our history. Just in watching the news, we can see recent cases, whether it be the shooting at Chattanooga, whether it be other cases where there's either state-sponsored terrorism or the rise of ISIL. And it is important that we understand this threat, because in understanding this threat, then we can build the programs to protect ourselves. Clearly, we require a substantial anti-terrorism program. What has the Army done to help defend against the threat? I think what has impressed me the most is the actions that have happened at all levels of the Army, whether from the departmental level, but perhaps, well, actually most importantly, at the local level. With the different products that are available for awareness and reporting, for example, use of iWatch, we have taken great strides to educate to the lowest level, whether it's the required anti-terrorism level one training or working through our family readiness groups to let people know that if they see something that doesn't fit in, that they need to say something about that. Most recently, we've placed a lot of effort in understanding threats in the cyber domain, and especially how we use social media. And so we've done a lot of education on ways to protect one's identity you know, within social media. And that also is, is a, a very important initiative. And then finally, the improvements we have made both through technology and training for controlling access to our installations. Again, protecting from terrorist threats, protecting from criminal threats, but the, the aspect of understanding those who are coming onto our installations and, and controlling at the access control points has also been a great initiative. General, you've spoken about things that we've done to protect against the threat. Are there any special focus items for Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month? There's really two areas that I would like us to focus on during this month. The first is on social media. The responsible use of social media, as well as protecting our identity and the identity of our families, frankly, uh, in the cyber sphere. We've published a primer uh, that is available through the uh, anti-terrorism branch on, for headquarters department of the Army that shows how to protect one's identity in social media, and I would encourage uh, folks to look at that. And that really leads into the other aspect of this Awareness Month, and that is training. Not only the training at our installations, where we do training, for example, to respond to an active shooter situation, but even training at a very local level, at the office, or one's personal aspect of being aware of those actions one should take uh, in a situation, for example, uh, that occurred in Tennessee. It's very important that we understand the best personal protective measures and defensive measures uh, for those crisis situations. And using the different material that is available is a great start to preparing and protecting ourselves. Those are clear priorities. Is there more we need to do? I think there is. Um, again, in light of, of recent activities, but also certainly what has happened uh, in the last several years, it's important that we exercise and we test our reaction to different emergency situations like an active shooter. But I think it's important that we really take this as a community approach as well. And the community isn't just our installation, uh, though our installations are, are certainly a community, but it's, it's a broader recognition that, that we are in a collaboration with our civilian communities that many of us choose to live in. And so it's important that as we look at our plans, 
It's done in collaboration and coordination with our local law enforcement agencies to better protect, to better understand what is happening in the areas around our installations. How can viewers obtain more information about anti-terrorism awareness and protecting themselves and their families? Well, first, certainly do require training, the level one anti-terrorism training. But I would use your anti-terrorism officer that is assigned to your unit or organization. A lot of our resources are funneled through them and are available to you. You can certainly go to the Army Anti-Terrorism Enterprise Portal for government workers, for military. Uh, and for our family members and family readiness groups, they can go to the Army One Source to gain some of these materials. General, is there anything else you'd like to add? I would. Um, I want to draw your attention to the tri-sign letters of the Secretary, the Chief, and the Sergeant Major of the Army, where they encourage leaders to be engaged in this program to make continual improvement. Because frankly, our best defense is a comprehensive, all community participating for the protection of our communities against this threat. That's what I would want to emphasize. Thank you, General.